I'm taping this on Thursday, October 24th, United Nations Day, and consistent with the day, there issued from the Secretary General's office a statement, a statement containing the usual uh, linguistic versatility and panache of statements from the UN. <coughs> you want to know the truth? The words lie dead on the page. My co-director was saying that a third grader could write it, and then we decided that it was an insult to third graders. But in any event, the prepubescent verbiage we have to deal with contained the phrase human rights. And so I thought I'd measure the day against the countries that were elected to the Human Rights Council in Geneva about 10 days ago. The Human Rights Council in Geneva is a body 47 countries strong, and every year 14 countries are elected or re-elected to the Council for a term of three years, and they're elected by the overall UN constituency of 193, 194 countries. So what was the first country that I can think of elected to the Human Rights Council? Venezuela. Venezuela, where human rights barely have any meaning anymore with the extrajudicial executions and the torture and the murder that is going on in that country. But the human rights to health, let alone everything else, have also been fatally compromised. And people are actually crossing the bridge between Venezuela and Colombia to bring back food and medicine. I mean, just think of the 120,000 people living with HIV tormented by the inability to guarantee a continuous supply of antiretroviral drugs to keep them alive. Talk about the loss of human rights. And then the other country from Latin America that was elected to the Human Rights Council is Brazil, where President Bolsonaro has clearly decided to, to obliterate the ethnic groups in the Amazon who oppose his policies in the Amazon not to mention his appearance at the General Assembly of the UN last month where he made explicitly anti-human rights observations. You think that's all? No, not at all. Also elected to the Human Rights Council was Armenia. Armenia where they institutionalize children with intellectual disabilities and where there is a positive epidemic of domestic violence. And as if that wasn't enough, Libya went on to the Human Rights Council. Libya, where warring factions trying to control the government are still at play, and where the transit camps en route to Europe for some refugees are embodiments of human atrocity. And presumably, reverence for the Human Rights Council is also shown by the election of Mauritania to the Council. Uh, Mauritania is a country which still contains slavery and on top of that provides capital punishment for, get this, blasphemy, adultery, and homosexuality. And finally, there is the Law and Justice Party from Poland. Poland was elected to the Human Rights Council, and that party has now fingered Roma, vulnerable groups like LGBT, and specifically Muslims for the most savage oppression. You see, what's happened to the Human Rights Council in Geneva is positively heartbreaking because it is the antithesis of human rights. And what we need in this world is some country or countries that will speak eloquently and openly about the principles of human rights. And those countries are so hard to find. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.